What is up, everybody? Jim to my right, Mr. Ryan Muckenhern, across from us right now. Uh, oftentimes, guys, we do cartridge talks. We often chat about rifles. And uh, it makes sense that these things uh, intermingle throughout any discussion, and that's what we got here today. We're talking about a rifle and a cartridge mm -hmm. together here. If you're watching on YouTube. It's about connection. It's about connection. <laughs> uh a rather cute cartridge, Ryan. Yeah. The six arc. And a rather cute petite rifle. Tell us about it. So this all started many years ago when I hatched an idea that's not novel and not my own for what I called the stick rifle, which was a rifle of minimum dimensions in a cartridge adequate enough to kill big game, say up to mule deer, in as light and small a package as I could put together. Mm -hmm. And I ran into a lot of roadblocks, most of which were financial, some of which were constraints of manufacturing. Um, and I never pursued the, the system. What changed? Well, you see, Hawa came out with the gun. <laughs> Like, this gun came out, and you obviously were sitting on this idea for a while. This goes, which, I, which I feel like you have accomplished at least very closely in some different rifles. Your Kimber Montana, you've got uh, the uh, your Tika that you shortened up quite a bit. They're all missing a few things. Right. Yeah. Where I'm going with that, though, is like this came out, and you're like, bye now. Mm -hmm. Pretty much instantaneously. So, you kind of have a bit of a complex, too, when it comes to buying firearms. You usually take a long time. I do. There's a lot of deliberation, a lot of backing away from the internet. But this um, one was just, it was just it. Yeah. Hook, line, sinker. It was. So the initial concept rifle was going to be chambered in 6.5 Grendel. And it was going to be a Remington Model 7 length action that was heavily skeletonized with uh, an 18-inch barrel with a blind box so no floor plate. Okay, yeah. Um, hand laminated or hand laid carbon fiber stock. It was going to go with an MPI rifle stock, which are really cool. And um, what I ran into is the company that was producing the action couldn't do that magazine style on that action. They could give me a detachable box magazine, which I was completely against. And they couldn't do a blind or a hinge floor plate. And that was like the biggest thing. The second part was the cartridge dimensions. So 6.5 Grendel, 6 Arc, 6 PPC, um, 30 Gremlin, all 6 millimeter AR turbo, all utilize um, this goofy cartridge dimension, which is not as goofy as it once was. It's getting less goofy every day. Every 6 Arc and 6.5 Grendel that's purchased is propelling this bolt face diameter into commonality, which is great. Um, I really wanted that cartridge. The Kimber you had mentioned earlier, if I could find a uh, an 84 action for a reasonable enough price, I'd use that as the basis uh, of the build. And I would go with a chambering um, like 6-dasher. Okay. Yep. Uh, or 6-5-dasher, whatever you want to call that variant. Because um, that's a 308 bolt face and there's brass for it. And I, or I could make brass and I could use that gun, but I can't find those actions readily. I'd have to buy the whole gun, which is very expensive, and then part it apart and right make some concessions this checked all the boxes immediately it's a it's the Hawa mini action so it's a it's a Hawa 1500 through and through they have a long action they have a short action and then they have a mini action um, so this houses cartridge is like 223 221 fireball 7.62 by 39 65 grendel 6 arc 300 ac very appropriately it's a, it's a scaled action um, they put a pencil weight barrel on it it's equipped with an extraordinarily lightweight carbon fiber stock. Stocks, I haven't weighed the stock standalone. It's 20 ounces or less. Now, I have made some changes to the rifle right away. So if, if you're looking at a Hawa carbon stocker, which this is, that's what it's called, on the internet, you're going to notice that it comes with a detachable box magazine, which, as I alluded to earlier, I am very much so against for personal reasons. Wait, just in general? I thought you liked detachable box magazines in some cases. In some cases, I do. If, if the magazine is... 
built the way I like it, and if it's as close to a flush fit as possible and there's no sound, it doesn't rattle. Sure. So, yeah. like, if you put an AICS magazine in, into, like, a Magpul bottom metal and a Magpul hunter stock, give that gun a shake, it makes yeah. some noise. And the magazines are kind of expensive. True. Um, except for, you know, Magpul makes a pretty affordable option. I didn't want that on this. I wanted it as buttoned up, as low profile, as slim and sleek as possible. So it does come with a detachable box magazine that's totally fine for functionality standpoint. And it's also lightweight. But there is an outfit called Jefferson Outdoors that makes this beautiful, I'll call it an Obendorf-style bottom metal for the Howell Mini Action. And it's machined aluminum. It's very lightweight. The whole assembly is three and a half ounces to include the spring and follower and internal box magazine. That is brilliantly machined out of what appears to be Delrin. Um, nests perfectly in the stock. Mates perfectly with the action. Feeds like uh, what feeds good? Sewing machines. Yeah. <laughs> so I did. Well, feeds like a dog. My yeah, dog feeds right. good. Feeds like a duck. Um, ducks like bread. <laughs> <laughs> So I did, I did put that on there. I think I saved a little bit of weight, but I don't think... I'm talking like maybe a half an ounce. But I guess if you're, you know, stalking around in the bush like I think you intend to do with this yeah. thing, it's less snaggy. Correct. Yep. And I think it really does a nice job of complimenting the rifle. It looks good. It looks I was going to say, it, looks it's, very it's, nice. it was more of a form factor than anything else, yes. Yeah. Um, well, yes and no. I mean... I didn't want the magazine protruding out the bottom. Um, no, that's what I mean. Like yeah. as far as like yep. you know, and and I I like I like that. I like I like the way that it set up. Well, it's just a just a sleek petite. It's pretty setup. svelte. Mm-hmm. It's pretty svelte. So as configured in my hands, six pounds, three point nine ounces. You have the optic on top. You got I do. a two piece ring set up, yep. and that is the Viper HS two and a half to ten by forty four. Yeah. So as configured, that's pretty. And you know what I like? It's got a threaded You're barrel. You're right. Despite the fact that it's one of those little pencil profile barrels, it's threaded. That's so okay. So when you want to put one of them quiet boys on the end, you can. Yep. It's it's uh, it's a well put together gun. Um, Fit and finish feels really nice on it. It really is. And so it's got a, a two stage trigger, which I'll take or leave. I'd prefer a single stage for a hunting rifle, but I don't mind the trigger. Um, I haven't played with the pull weight yet. It is an adjustable trigger, but it's it's pretty clean. It's fairly light. It's a little on the spongy side, but not anything I can't get over from a hunting trigger perspective. How do you feel? Uh, how do you feel comfort wise? You don't have any adjustability. It appears in the stock, and you're you know obviously using an optic. So with the ring systems that I'm running, its presentation is pretty keen. I could of course use a slight bump on the stock right. for a little bit of comb height. But like my Kimber, for instance, which is a gun I'm obsessed with, um, it's as good as I can get it without having to start making concessions to the stock and adding weight. Sure, yeah. It's certainly huntable. The idea behind this rifle is this is not a 600-yard hunting gun. This isn't a precision hunting rifle. This is something that I plan on strapping to my pack and heading out in long, long days of chasing pronghorn uh, on the on the plains or chasing mule deer in you know the mountain timber and places like that or whitetails here in wisconsin where i'm probably not going to run into a long shot uh which is good because i'm using a pretty marginal cartridge from from like a performance standpoint um and i just want something uber portable Mm -hmm. and i wanted something very 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 trim and it is it is that it's very Uh, i'd say possibly some offhand shots sure yeah uh, and I would speculate one nice thing about that cartridge, you know, if you're slipping through the timber or something like that, you know, you're going to get on that critter, squeeze it off, and likely watch that impact versus get, you know, bucked off the gun a little bit, what happened, where did he go. Um, yeah. You're going to watch that go down a little bit. Yep. Originally, you said you were looking for a 6.5 Grendel, but I did. when this came out in 6 Arc, you... You didn't even hesitate. What? Oh, there was a little deliberation on the two chamberings. So I have 6.5 Grendel dies. I have 6.5 Grendel ammo. I have a 6.5 Grendel, not assembled. Um, <laughs> and AR or bolt gun? It's an AR. Okay. That and so, would explain it. Right. I, I had run the numbers on 6.5 Grendel to a point where I was content with what performance I was going to get with it. And then the ARC had come out um, not very long ago, 
you know, on the commercial scene, it became a Sammy standardized cartridge and, and it's pretty appealing to me. And then I ran them side by side in as many iterations as I could. And actually the, the arc wins out every time. No way. The only thing that you're going to get with the Grendel, I think, is the ability to up the mass a little bit, like mm-hmm. running a 120, possibly 130 grain class projectile. And you get some more frontal area, which I still think is vitally important from from like a terminal sure. performance standpoint. But you do so with a degree of diminishing return. Um, so this cartridge is going to push you know, 100 to 108 grain projectile in a very respectable band of velocity with a higher ballistic coefficient. Again, not that this is a long range gun, but there is a, there, there are visible, I guess, improvements that the arc has at 300 yards over the Grendel. Um, and with a little bit more versatility in the bullet palette in these weights, there are not so many 6.5 projectiles in the style that I like to hunt with in that lighter class weight um, that lend themselves useful to a cartridge like the 6.5 Grendel. In the 6 millimeter, on the other hand, all of them are in that weight because that's the weight that they operate in. Um, so I've monkeyed around with a, the factory Hornady black chambering 105 grain boat tail hollow point, not a hunting bullet for what I'm doing. Um, and reasonable accuracy. What I'm going to be working towards is probably an 80 grain Barnes TTSX. I'm hoping that they'll leave that gun 22 inch barrel um, somewhere in the ballpark of 3,000 feet per second, which, looking at the 243 counterpart, that's considerably faster. It's 33 and change. Um, 3,000 feet per second is more than adequate for a 300 yard and in deer gun. Out of a 18 inch barrel? 22. 20. I oh, have 22? not. I've not okay. cropped the barrel. I was thinking about cropping the barrel. I was thinking about cutting it down to 18, but. The gun turned out pretty nice as it sits. Mm. And so there's some deliberation yet in my mind. That's an easy that's an easy thing to change. If I get one of those things that goes on the end of it, that makes them more quiet. And I feel like, yeah, you know, we could probably do without this weight. That's simple. Lop that off, give it a new set of threads, and we're off to the races. As configured, I'm pretty comfortable with this setup. I'm it's- I'm really impressed with the cartridge, like the inherent shootability cartridge is awesome what a cute little thing too they're sitting on the table here i mean but i like the six arc i have one too uh and mine i went with a complete opposite direction of yours granted it is mine does have an 18 inch barrel but otherwise it's chassis gun big heavy chunky and uh but shooting that six arc is a treat it's hilarious oh my gosh i pulled the triggers like that is the same felt recoil as my remington 700 adl 223 Right. You just boop. I mean, one thing that popped into my mind, <clears throat> not necessarily, you know, it's not a a budget rifle, but man, if you had a a youngster or some, you know, it's nice it, lightweight. You can hold it. You could carry it. So it's a spi- you could shoot it well. It's a spicier cost perspective than the standard. Like you can get the barreled actions for very reasonable, mm-hmm. like very reasonable, and then you can pick a stock that fits a Howa Mini. Or you can get them in another configuration too. They have this gun, not in this ultralight configuration, for an extraordinarily moderate price. But I mean, mm. I was I was thinking be, with the lightweight. Sure, sure, sure. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, well, because so often if you get a kid a lightweight gun and it's in a you know cartridge that you're going to be hunting deer with, not that there aren't some other lighter cartridges sure. that you can hunt deer with, but you give them that gun, it's like great. They can carry it around, but as soon as they shoot it, they're not going to want to shoot it again. Right. Right. You know. And or, so that and but this, I mean, absolutely. This kind of blends lightweight and shootability. The, yeah. the six arc, it, and it's unfortunate that the six arc at this point in time is moderately hard to find in comparison to some other cartridges, um, because as soon as you start shooting, you're like, I want to shoot it again. Yes. I want to shoot another one. I want to shoot another one. I can't stop. Some something that <laughs> something that impressed me a lot with the gun. One, I think that the terminal performance of the cartridge can't be overstated mm-hmm. for what it is. Um, it, it's not a three hundred eight. It's not a 300 win mag, right? But for, for a hunting cartridge, I think it's a better proposition than a 223. And I've killed Ooh. I've killed deer with a 223, and it worked fine. Um, that's an expert's cartridge, in in that context, in my opinion. It's like hunting game with a 410. Like you can go out and hunt waterfowl with a 410 and hunt upload with a 410. You got to be on the ball with that because it's a marginal shotgun gauge at best. 
And I, I feel that way about small calibers for big game too. You can do it with a 223. You've got to be on the ball. Your bullet selection has to be tops. Your shot placement has to be tops, period. I think you get a little more leeway with a six arc. Um, the shootability was about, like I said, I, identical. I, I actually had an audible giggle when I pulled the trigger the first time because <laughs> it, was, boop, it was, that's fun. Um, the gun does not heat up like I thought it would. It's a it's a pencil thin barrel. It's like a number two contour possibly. Okay. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna have to take it easy on this gun. My typical break in process is 20 rounds as fast as I can load the the gun and shoot it. Mm. Um, and so I gave it a like a quick five, six, seven, eight, and it was warm, but it wasn't hot. It wasn't like a Creedmoor or 243 where, like my 243, for instance, when I shoot the 80 grain TTSX, it's like five rounds and then that gun will boil water. Yeah. Um, this was warm. Because yeah. these just, they're, they're not, they're not screamers. No. But it's, I mean, I've got, obviously on mine, like I said, I got a big, beefy, chunky barrel on it. And I, I forget with that gun to even check for the heat. Yeah. Because it, it never changed, the POI, I don't see shifting. I don't see Mirage coming off the barrel. Even the suppressor I've gone on it doesn't get super hot at all. And and it's just, but it just it's awesome. I'm very excited to load for the chambering. Very excited. Moderate powder charges, 25 to 28 grains of powder. No kidding. Well, huh? I mean just a just a tick over 223. What powder does it does it like? Faster burning powders, so think like 322 Bargett um, XBR 8208, 4895, um, CFE 223. Uh, there's some lever evolution loads that are out there that guys are talking about. Faster burning stuff on that on that spectrum. Um, so anything that you'd load for a 223 would be pretty reasonably acceptable in this case as well. And it, the charges are barely over that of a 223. I think my hottest 223 loads are in that 25 grain class for, for heavier weight projectiles. Like I've got a 75 grain load that's hot. Um, and that's 20, 24 and a half grains uh, of, of a pretty fast burning rifle powder. Um, Forgive me, Ryan, but you said lever evolution. Mm -hmm. So guys are running lever guns in six arc or? No, 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 lever evolution powder. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I thought, never mind. I thought you were talking about like a six arc lever gun. <laughs> yeah. Right. Time. It's it's time. The BLR could do it. Oh, well, that's a, they made me think about it. So I'm I'm pretty jazzed. I've got a couple weeks yet until I go to Wyoming to kill a pronghorn. Oh, at time of recording, and uh, be a keen rifle to do that with. I sure would, wouldn't it? Yep. You know what'll happen though? I'll be out there with that gun. I'll have a cow elk tag in my pocket. And a cow elk will step out, and then I'll be like, "Well, you know, I wish I'd have brought something a little bit bigger." Yeah. But that happens too. It's cool. I'm I'm very impressed. I'm uh, so far I'm I'm ranking this as one of the neater guns that I picked up in a while. Exceptional accuracy, ridiculously fun to shoot yeah. and shootable, and it's just I just feel like it's what you want. It's it, what you it, want it, in a gun. Except, I, I mean, yeah, you could get stuff with bigger horsepower when you need it. Yeah, and and for the for the entire ethos of the build and the the whole, I think thing that I wanted to accomplish it I wasn't even considering that I it was like okay I've got a super lightweight 308 it weighs the same and actually it weighs just a little less um but the gun's hard to control and this is just going to be a joy yeah. to shoot joy, yeah. joy to carry joy to shoot you you've shot that 308 a ton and it's it's not terrible it's not the worst but it's snappy but it's there like you you know what's going off you don't recover from the shot well and it's braked this unbraked you watch the whole thing go down. Yeah. So they do suppress well, I can say. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. That'll be neat. I'm I'll, excited. I'll be curious to see which uh, rifle you choose to head a field with here shortly. Uh, it's probably gonna be this one. How is cool? They think, are I very neat company. Are, I think their guns are neat. Yep. Their guns go under the radar a lot. They do. Unrightfully so. I I think a lot of that's people like a, that's not a word. Unrightfully. I think uh, maybe it is, is it? Yeah. yeah. Unrightfully. Unrightfully. Yeah. yeah. There's it's the opposite of rightfully. Opposite of rightfully. Yeah. Yeah. Opposite uh, of rightfully so. Well, this is just they go this under is the a, radar. They could they filled a little bit of a hole here. They're, you darn right they did. Yep, they're one of the only companies that's offering a micro action. Uh, it was CZ with the five twenty seven, which was a miniature Mauser action. That gun's gone. 
uh, from the landscape. It's been replaced by a Model 600, which is a very cool gun. Don't mm-hmm, get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But the 527, I've had a couple of those. Those are neat rifles. Um, the Model 7 is gone uh, from Remington, which is a smaller than 700 action, but it's also still kind of full-sized in the sense that like the diameter of the action is quite large. And they are skirting away with kind of a, a beefy action. You compare it to like a Kimber or a Six Lug Weatherby. Those guns are pretty trim. Um, but the, the overall footprint, the size of the action is, is quite nice, quite nice. Every Howa that I've ever picked up, I remember when the first time someone told me, you know, oh, check it out, like these are made in Japan. Like you, I'm like, oh, that explains it. Yep. I can feel that. Yep. Like they just, it reminds me of, this could come across the wrong connotation to like these certain people. But like you look at the, you look at the engine bay of like a Honda. Sure. Like an old school Honda, and you're like, somebody took a lot of time figuring out where everything goes in here and put it together, and it was their their pride and joy to put it together in the right way. And it's just you can tell that somebody took a lot of time to put this together right. Folks in the know about actions will look at a Howa 1500 action and look at a Remington 700 action, and in good confidence and clear conscience, say that the 1500 is an improvement to the Model 700. Hmm. Yeah. I'm that's excited. A, that's a bold statement. It is. That it is. is. That it is. Yeah. The only things I think maybe I'll change is maybe I'll put a different trigger in there. I don't know. Let me see that thing. Careful. Oh, because he's got that two stage thing. Yeah. Maybe. I we'll could see. see how that would be a little. I wouldn't expect that out of a bolt gun. Mark's diligence checks these days. There's nothing wrong with it. No. It's just different from what I'm I'm accustomed to running. Yeah. Yeah, I can't say a time that I've ever had a two-stage trigger on a bolt gun. I mean, like personally that I've shot that. Sure. But I know they exist, but I'm I'm pleased. It's attractive. It's got the lines I like. You know, I think your one modification was Yeah, the the trigger guard, yeah. Yeah. For the floor plate again this Jefferson Outdoors. Uh, really cool. They make a CZ magazine conversion kit too. So if you do want a detachable mag, that CZ 527 mag, which are admittedly going to get a little bit more difficult to find now that the 527 is no longer produced. That's a very nice magazine. It's metal. It's thin, um, well built. And then they also have a just a, a floor plate closure. So it deletes any floor plate. Um, it saves a half an ounce over this. I debated on that too. And I thought, you know, I might as well get a hinge floor plate and be able to dump all the cartridges out of the gun in one uh, yeah. versus have that that yeah. blind or that uh, floor plate delete. It's three position safety too, so bolt lockout, intermediate, bolt open, but still trigger disconnect, and then forward for fire. So very, very cool gun, very keen gun. Um, that is the Howa Model 1500 Carbon Stalker. They also offer this in larger format cartridges too, just a slightly bigger gun. So you can get these in, you know, regular big game chamberings okay sure yeah sure well, that'll be fun Love i it. um i'd like to i'd like to hit the old loading bench possibly this week or weekend and uh play around with some 80 grain barns ttsx's and a little bit of varget and a little bit of xbr and see what kind of magic we can make I do hope that six arc just keeps taking off like a rocket because I would love it if it were as easy and uh, more inexpensive to find as something like you know six five creeds and, and the three oh eights of the ro- world and rel- I, all relatively speaking. I I think it will. So we we've talked about the cartridge before on a cartridge mm-hmm. stock. One thing that it, it doesn't have going for it is that bolt face. That is that's the hard part. It's yeah. four fifty bolt face and it's odd. So you can get four fifty bolt faces from companies like PTG, for instance, and you can put it into a Remington 700. Um, but this is an expensive amendment to the rifle. Guns like a Savage that you can change the bolt faces out on very easily. It's okay. a sim- simple pin, pull it out, put a new bolt face in. 450 bolt faces have existed for some time. Um, that's an easy amendment. Gas guns, of course, and six arc are taking off. There is military adoption to this cartridge in some mm-hmm. certain and special um, capacities, and that bodes very well for it. Sure. Yeah, and knowing that that cartridge is downrange working right now uh, is is really quite a, a strong talking point. That it, never hurts traction no, for a cartridge. No. The PRS community is paying attention to six arc and like cartridges like six dasher, for instance. Like Mikey T shoots a dasher. Um, Ruben has an arc, uh, and 
his gun is configured specifically for arc and it's everything the dasher has except it's the factory option yep you know I'm, I'm eager for to, that. I'm eager to see what it's like out of a gas gun. I've been really contemplating getting a gas gun yeah. uh, upper for my AR, uh, for an AR lower. And um, I mean, that's where the cartridge I mean, standard. was designed for. It. Yeah, I, I'm curious to see how that would do. And and one of the nice things I remember when I was looking into it is they did an interview with um, uh, was it Jaden yeah. over there yeah. at Hornady, and they were talking to him about barrel length choices, and and he said that they had tested barrel lengths all the way from your classic. PRS, big old 26-inch, you yep. know, whatever barrel, all the way down to, I want to say, 12.5. And he said that other than the obvious, you know, what you would expect in some some variance in muzzle velocity, he said that they saw the performance of it in terms of accuracy and, and lots of other performance figures. It really didn't have a dramatic effect on it. And that was what caused me to want to, you know, you have you said a 22-inch barrel here, and, and I went with the 18. I almost even went all the way down to 16 because I was like, well, it's, it sounds like it's not going to affect anything. Sure, sure enough, yours shoots. It is capable of shooting a bug hole group. Mine's capable of shooting a bug hole group. There's four inch difference there. I'm sure our velocities are probably a little different, but I mean, I'm going to throw a chrono on it. I have the chrono in the car, um, so we'll we'll throw a chrono on it. We'll see what it does at 22 inches. I'll make some extrapolations and guesses as to what I'll end up with, reducing bullet mass by about uh, 25 grains, and then see if I'm comfortable with, with cropping it. I may not. Like I said, yeah. I'll, I'll save probably an ounce per inch, but then the only reason that cropping it would make any sense was either to just shave ounces off of this thing, get it sub six pounds configured, but then I'll probably end up putting a can on it anyways. I'll just save some length. It's still handy. It's yeah. still very handy. Yeah. But yeah, it is just neat how flexible that cartridge is. In fact. It'd be a fun little coyote gun too. So I've got a bobcat tag in my pocket this year. Oh, dear. Look at you. Yep. I've also got some Barnes banded solids, and that might make a fine bobcat rifle. Boy, it certainly would. Yep. I would think. I would think so, too. Hmm. I know it. I'm excited for that hunt. That's curious as well. Well, Ryan, uh, I'm glad you picked this thing up. Yeah, me too. I'm uh, I'm intrigued by it. Yes. I like it a lot. Yes. And uh, yeah, thanks for sharing it with us. I, like I said, I, I like the uh, the updates yep. you did to make it yours, and yep. I feel like they're very practical and they make a lot of sense. Uh, cool cartridge. Yeah, like, I'm, like I, you guys have been saying. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think it's, I think it's got enough to to stay going here. It yep. seems to follow the trend that we're seeing. Yeah, kind of. I guess. Um, and so far is the viable factory solution. Right. Which is which I think is really important, super important to note. Hey, I'd be curious, Ryan. Yo. What was the last big cartridge that Hornady developed and came out with that was a lead balloon? Can you think of one? Mm. And how long ago was it? They've had some I've got home some, runs. I, I've lately. got some thoughts on three hundred PRC. Oh. I do. Because it's it's a hard cartridge to chamber in some rifles. Okay. So you're there's certainly factory offerings, but when a shooter looks at what you get with a 300 versus what you get with the seven PRC, I see that seven PRC edge in the 300 out from from like practical standpoint. Now from sheer horsepower and long range payload, I mean if we're looking for a long range long range gun, 300 PRC is going to be a hell of a, an option to try to beat. And so I'm not saying it's a lead balloon, but I'm curious to see how it does neck and neck with a seven. Yeah, that. That seven seems to be a sweet spot I in would, that lineup of cartridges. I would say, looking at the offerings that they've done, um, usually in conjunction with an arms manufacturer, something like 300 RCM, 338 RCM. Okay. Definite lead balloons for no good reason. These are brilliant cartridges. They just did not hook up. 30 TC did not hook up. True. Um, but it's just, it seems like they've had a lot of home runs. Lately. They have gotten everything right. Uh, like honestly, like I, said, I tell people all the time, if you're if you're in that area, stop by, and you'll see why they make some of the best ammunition and components anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we shoot gobsmacks of Hornady factory ammo here, and when we do the edge reloading class, we're using Hornady components mm-hmm. because the stuff is just dialed. Yep. Yeah. It works pretty good. Yeah. Yep. I'm I'm jazzed. Awesome. Yeah. Nifty. Well, thanks everybody for listening. Are you uh, are you intrigued by uh, little lightweight matchstick rifles like Ryan's here? Do you like the six arc? 
Uh, are you everything carbon these days, like I am? Everything's carbon. It used to be ball bearings, and now it's carbon, Jim. Uh, <laughs> let us know. We want to know. We like talking about this stuff, obviously, because we do it on the daily. Heck yeah. And, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye. See ya.